Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm Simon bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Let's continue to binge on some delicious Zendikar content as I take a look at some of the notable races found on the plane. Today, I want to take a look at the Zendikarian Angels. They're similar to other angels found throughout the multiverse, but their story is unique to the Tragic Plane's history. The Angels of Zendikar start their holy lives just as any other angel throughout the multiverse, by being formed. Unlike most life on the plains, angels are not born, but rather they're molded from pure essence of white magic. An angel is born when a large manifestation of white mana gathers and forms a holy avatar of justice. This is true for all angels, and those of Zendikar are of no exception. As angels, they embody both virtue and truth. They don't just incorporate these traits, but they will also die defending them. They are warriors of light and fighters for good, fierce allies to the defenseless and valiant executioners of evil. Although they're the perfect soldiers against the dark and evil things of the world, angels have their limits, and they discovered those limits on Zendikar. The first time the Eldrazi Titans Emrakul, Ulamog, and Kozilak appeared on Zendikar, they were quickly captured and secured by the combined efforts of Ugin, Sorin, and Nahiri. Angels had no time to encounter these powerful enemies, but their time to test their mettle against these most evil of beings would come some centuries later. As Zendikar grew on, almost forgetting about the existence of these horrible prisoners, the earth beneath the mountain of Akum began to give way. This was the first major escape of the Eldrazi from their magical prison. The angels of Zendikar were some of the first to come to the plane's defense, but they found that the evil of the Eldrazi was unlike anything they had faced before. The Eldrazi's hunger for mana knew no bound, and they destroyed all land and lives which stood in their paths. The magic of the angels had no effect on the colorless monsters, while the Eldrazi found the pure manifestation of white mana which composed the angels very delectable. It was a slaughter. The angels of Zendikar didn't stand a chance. While the angels fought valiantly, the Eldrazi sought to hunt and consume every last one of them. It was a goal they never got to achieve. Many may have fallen to the Eldrazi, but those who remained were strong. Strong enough to resist being enslaved by these monsters like vampires had been. The survivors may have kept their lives, but they lost much more than the citizens of Zendikar could ever imagine. An angel's halo, a symbol of the virtues which the winged protectors live and die by, is one of the most iconic characteristics of this race. Yet this symbol of purity would become a symbol of shame for the angels of Zendikar. When the angels became powerless to stop the atrocities of the Eldrazi, the angels of Zendikar lowered their halos and covered their eyes. The pure energy of their halos caused them great pain, but this pain was nothing compared to the pain of witnessing their failures. Their inability to protect those in need caused the angels to hide from their shame. They could do nothing against the Eldrazi, so they blinded themselves from the threat entirely. The angels who covered their eyes basically were blind to the activity of the Eldrazi, so they could focus on protecting others on the plane who were yet to be slaughtered by the hungering beasts. It seemed that the plane was on its last heel, its main protectors had given up the fight and the land itself was failing to contain the Eldrazi with its royals. This is when the three original planeswalkers who imprisoned the Eldrazi on Zendikar reappeared and again sealed the beast away deep in the Eye of Ugin. After this catastrophe, the three agreed to return if something like this was to ever happen again, although the damage had already been done. As the generations and centuries passed, the memory of the major Eldrazi attack started to fade away to antiquity. History of the Titans turned to admiration, with denizens referring to the horrible creatures as gods. With the term god being thrown around loosely in regards to these... things, the citizenry began to apply godly traits to the Eldrazi. Three gods formed from the twisted memory of the Eldrazi. They became the deities Emiria, Ula, and Kozi. Emiria is the most relevant to this story, as the Eldrazi was depicted as being a beautifully winged angel. The people even warped the solemn image of the angel's lowered halos as being attributed to their impartiality and devotion to the truth. While those angels who lowered their halos could no longer see or even mention the Eldrazi threat, there were some few who kept the truth of the Eldrazi. These were only the greatest of Archangels, those who were powerful enough to resist the pull and helpless nature of the Eldrazi. These angels still see the Eldrazi for what they truly are, 
while so many others have forgotten. Iona is one such angel, a powerful archmage who still devotes her life to defending the innocents from all threats, even the Eldrazi. Though she's been the savior of countless lives over the centuries, the people have wrongly connected her to the false god Emeria, bestowing upon her the title Shield of Emeria, a title which still haunts Iona to this day. The Eldrazi would not stay locked up forever, and again, the foundation of Akum shattered under the pressure of these titans. It was the great event, the rise of the Eldrazi, and again, the angels went in as the plane's first line of defense. While those who were blinded continued to ignore this threat, others found the strength to remove their halos and rejoin their brethren in the fight. One such angel was named Linvala, who had the mysterious power to silence great areas and even the Eldrazi. With the angels coming to their senses and lifting their halos, more and more joined in to protect their home, but again, the Eldrazi gods were just too much for them. This time, the three never returned to the plane to re-imprison the Eldrazi, and even a blunder from the planeswalker Nether Ravain caused the beast prison to be broken forever. Zendikar was lost and abandoned, Soren left believing the plane was doomed, Nisa followed in the vampire's footsteps, Nahiri was missing, and Ugin had died at the hands of Nicobolus. The angels could only do so much before the plane was lost forever, but their fates remain a mystery to us. And that's all we know about the Angels of Zendikar thus far, but with us returning to the plane in the battle for Zendikar, I can't wait to see how they continue their story. I'd like to believe that the Angels did in fact put up a valiant defense, since we're only seeing Ulamog in the battle for Zendikar, perhaps the Angels were able to send the other two Eldrazi back to the Blind Eternities, but who knows. In any case guys, I want to know what you guys think about the Angels of Zendikar in the comments below. Do you think they'll make a return in the battle for Zendikar? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share, and sub to the channel. It really goes a long way in supporting future content. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.